Can you beat Pokemon Brilliant Diamond only using Piblup? The only rule for the run? No evolving. Items are allowed. This isn't a minimalistic run. If we beat Cynthia only using Piplup, we beat this challenge. This video is inspired from my success on my Sobble only playthrough in Sword and Shield, but this time with Piplup in the brand new Diamond and Pearl remakes. Now I just figured out as I'm editing this video, Alfred's doing the exact same thing. Hopefully mine comes out first, because if his does, this video is going to get no views. If mine comes out first, he'll get views no matter what. He's Alfred. I'm a small channel. I need the views. Speak Speaking of which, before we start, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe. Enjoy the video. As we start our journey, Professor Rowan introduces himself. We then get to pick our character. We obviously choose Dawn. And who might our rival be named? Trash. And we name ourselves Tiny Dawn for obvious reasons. It's Dawn, but tiny and amazingly adorable. I start the game by looking around the house a bit, just admiring the chibi art style. I absolutely love it. Don't know why people hate it. A game doesn't have to be 4K to be good. Upon getting to the lake, we approach the suitcase and get attacked by some burbs. And then we decide to steal the champion of the run, Piplup. I'm sorry you had to be chosen, but I've got a mission to complete. We then have our first battle together in which we slap a starling to death. After that, Rowan's like, you know what? You can take your stolen Piplup. I don't want it. Epic. We then do a few more wild battles and level Piplup up for the very first time to level six. Woo! Lucas then shows us what a Pokemon Center and a Pokemon is, as if I haven't been playing Pokemon basically all my life. We say our goodbyes and our mum's like, yeah, this 10 year old can go out into the world and just, you know, fight people. And upon leaving, our mum's like, hey, you're not dawn without your epic little hat. I love this art style. Lucas then demonstrates how to catch a Pokemon. Yeah, that's totally stuff I'm going to be doing in this run. And we have our very first trainer battle against a youngster, which helps us get us to level seven. We then face a few more trainers before heading to Jubilife City. And just look at Lucas. Look at how he walks. Anyone who thinks this game isn't just adorable, die. And now that we have the Poketch, we can move on. Fighting more trainers and approaching our very first trainer who was actually kind of hard. She had a Badoo and obviously being a Piplup, the whole typing system was just against me. It knew Stun Spore, which paralyzed me and Absorb, which not only did a lot of damage to me, also healed the Badoo. This was actually my first time my Piplup fainted. I trained Piplup to level 11 and Critical hit the Badoo to show who's the real boss. And it turned out I didn't really need to do that battle. I, I went the wrong way. Epic awesome. We enter Route 203 and Trash is ready for our first battle against each other. This was the first time I was going to crush his dreams of becoming the champion, because that's my goal. His Starly and Turtwig were no match for me. We then explored the environment a bit, did more trainer battles of course, and an old man underground taught me about hidden moves. We did some more battles in the mines and reached Orberg City. Trash told us the gym leader wasn't there, so we had to go exploring in the actual mines, and we found Rock, the gym leader, just standing in between some rocks, because that's what miners do. Hey look, rocks. We prepare Piplup by healing him in the Pokemon Center, ready to take on the first gym battle, the Rock Gym. The trainer battles were skippable, but I decided to do them anyway because I knew that XP was going to be a big problem throughout this run. This gym was looking very promising though because water types are very strong against rock types. And after beating all the trainers, it was time to take on our very first gym battle against Rock. Obviously due to having the type tables in my favor, his Geodude was one-shottable. Same with his Onyx if it didn't have sturdy and his Kranados was easily killed in two shots and just like that our first gym battle was a success unfortunately the next gyms weren't going to be so easy but with that we have earned our first of the eight gym badges and upon killing the Zubat I reached level 16 which is where Piplup tried to evolve for the first time nope not happening. Next up came our first interaction with Team Galactic, the evil team for Pokemon Diamond and Pearl. And we started our first encounter with them by doing a two on two battle with Lucas. And hearing the Team Galactic new remix was just really cool. This whole game's soundtrack is just amazing. All the songs that have been remade are just, oh, spot on. We beat the grunts with ease. I also decided to teach Piplup Rock Tomb, which would help me throughout the run later. And then it was time for some more generic going through the environment, doing trainer battles until we reach Floroma Town. And just look at this place. Look how pretty it is. So many colorful flowers. A little girl then tells us her dad has been kept hostage by Team Galactic. So we're like, hey, let us in. Let him free. But the Team Galactic dude's like, no, fight me. So I just kill his cat. And he's like, that was kind of rude. Goes in the building, locks the door from the inside. And now it's time to search for a key. We go to Floroma Meadow, where we fight another two Team Galactic members who are very easy. And an old man gives us the key to an organizational building. The Pokemon world is 
it's crazy, man. But before we leave, we just had to check out this amazing area. Prettyish location in the game. Changed my mind. We make our way into the building and meet the first galactic commander, Commander Mars. Now, I can't say the fight was very hard because it wasn't. All I had to use was a potion to make sure I didn't die, and defeating all our Pokemon was no problem. Now getting us up to level 18, and learning Bubble Beam. With the kid reunited with her dad, we could move on. And again, more just exploring the routes, doing trainer battles, leveling up, and encountering a girl who also had a Piplup, which gave me an opportunity to show her who's the superior one, by literally throwing rocks on her Piplup. Once we reach the Eterna Forest, Cheryl, the gym leader, is like, Hey, I can't explore this area on my own. Please help me. As if she doesn't know how to navigate the forest right next to her gym. And you're a gym leader. You should be able to beat anything that comes your way. You stupid. But it was pretty cool getting to team up with the gym leader for this little stretch, doing a bunch of double battles. And once we reached the end, we were at Eterna City. We then meet Cynthia, the champion for the first time, who's like, Hey, kid, here's cut. It's probably something you shouldn't teach a kid, but thanks, Cynthia. So kind of you. And despite my massive disadvantage in typing, I decided to just give the gym a go. I spent a good 10 to 20 minutes just beating all the trainers and learned that the move Peck was super effective against the grass types. And now it was time for our first attempt against Gardenia, the grass gym leader of the second gym. Obviously, like I said before, I knew I was at a disadvantage and I knew I was going to be underleveled. I kind of just did this run to see how far I could get and how much more levels I would need to complete it. Her Cherubi was very easy to kill, but her turd twig took me out in two attacks. On my way to find a spot to grind XP, I witnessed the epic golden Dialga statue and found myself a pretty good spot to just grind Pokemon wild battles. I grinded for a little bit and managed to get myself to level 26, which was two levels higher than before, and decided to just give it another shot, because why not? I managed to take her turd twig out this time, but her Roserade was another story. It knew Petal Blizzard, a very, very strong move against Piplup. And I kid you not, when I went off to grind, I was earning so little XP from the wild encounters. Like, so little. I was too lazy to find a spot that could have given me better XP, but I just spent like two hours literally grinding from level 26 to level 30. Yeah, it took a while. I was really hopeful that level 30 would be enough because I did not want to do anymore. And, well, I died to Petal Blizzard again. And I got really close the next time, but died to Grass Knot. And then I died again to Petal Blizzard. But you know what they say? Fourth time's the charm, right? Yep, they all say that. And instead of using like a super effective move, she's like, hey, let's use Poison Sting, which just allowed me to defeat the Roserade. Thanks. Th thanks. Awesome. And just like that, two gyms down, six to go. To then progress through the story, we, as like the 10-year-old we are, break into the Galactic Building, harass a bunch of Galactic members, and take on the next commander, Commander Jupiter. She was no problem like the other commander, and we were now able to buy a bike. This is perfection right here. We then have to get the Explorer Kit from an old man in his house. Y y what, what is with the Pokemon world and just breaking into people's houses and they're like, hey, let me give you something. And that allowed us to go to the underground area, which is a place where you could find lots of wild Pokemon roaming free, which would be a very good spot for me to grind XP later on. We then made our way into Cornet Cave for the very first time and had our first interaction with the Team Galactic leader, Cyrus, who's like, hey, I'm Cyrus. I'm gonna do evil stuff. And Tiny Dawn's just like, okay. This is fine. And then Trash is like, let's fight again. And I'm like, okay, crushing your soul fuels me, so why not? And then we do a bunch more route exploring, trainer battling, XP grinding, leveling upping, all the way until we reach Vilestone City, where we can take on the third gym. The third gym was a fighting gym, and in order to reach the leader, we had to do this weird puzzle with sliding doors and fight a bunch of Ryus. I guess Ryu joined Pikachu and coming back to the Pokemon universe from Smash Bros. I plowed through all the Ryus before fighting the gym leader just to get that extra XP, and man, that puzzle takes a while to do. My small brain can't handle it. Hopefully I only have to do that one time. And now it was time to see how powerful I was. Could I take out the third gym leader, Maylene? I wasn't really sure how this battle would go. I'm terrible with type tables, so I'm like, I don't know if I'm at disadvantage. And well, for the most part, I wasn't, because Piplup knew Peck, which was very convenient for taking out her Metatite, as well as her Machoke pretty easily, but her Lucario was a problem. It knew Drain Punch, a very strong move against Piplup, and one that heals Lucario. It didn't take long for Lucario to kill me, but I got pretty close, so I decided to try again. Oh no, I gotta do the puzzle again. For some reason, they didn't just make it a one-off. <sighs> Finally. My second attempt was no better than my first, with Lucario defeating me again. But I'm like, surely third time's the charm. Oh, right. 
And, well, Lucario killed me again. You know the definition of insanity is trying the same thing over and over again and expecting a different outcome? Yeah, I think I've gone insane because I tried it again. And wouldn't you know it, lost again. It was time to use the Explorer Kit to try and get some XP. Long story short, basically you can enter one of the rooms, there's a random pool of Pokemon that can spawn, there's a bunch of common ones, but occasionally you'll get rarer ones, and they give off a lot more XP. And it really wasn't worth fighting the smaller Pokemon that give you less XP. So basically what I did is I'd go in a room, see if there's a rare Pokemon in there worth fighting, and if there wasn't, I'd go out the room, go back in and it spawns a bunch of new Pokemon. And the Pokemon that I battled to help me gain a bunch of XP were Houndoom, Pachirisu or Absol. Those were the ones who gave me a decent amount of XP per kill. After reaching level 49, people up learned how to use Drill Peck, which was just Peck but better, which was obviously good for this battle because Peck was what was doing the most damage. So I tried again. And whilst Drill Peck was a great upgrade for Piplup, it still wasn't even able to one-shot the Machoke and wasn't as good as some of the other moves I'd try to use to take out the Lucario, ending in another defeat. The next attempt also ended in another defeat. I did a bunch more underground training and made it to level 41, and thankfully this time around managed to defeat the Lucario. And it, it wasn't even due to like the leveling up, it was due to him using bulk up which just gave me a free hit on him. But it was good to be pretty over leveled because it'll obviously help me throughout the rest of the run. We were now at three badges, almost halfway. Next, Lucas is then like, hey, Team Galactic stole my Pokedex. So we take out two of the grunts pretty easily. And I must say Team Galactic overall was just very easy. They kept having Pokemon like Dustox and Beautify, which Drill Peck would just one shot, so that was good. And then Lucas is like, let's go to Pistoria City. So off we went. We made our way through the Valor Lakefront, the beach, and was in Pistoria City in no time. And the gym was open. We could go to it straight away. This time around, it was a water gym. Same typing as Piplup, of course. Now, I didn't have any moves that were super effective against water types, but just due to my over leveling, Drill Peck was pretty good at just taking out Pokemon in one shot. I spent some time defeating all the trainers and doing the little water puzzle they had, and just like that, we were already up to the fourth gym leader. Wake. His first Pokemon was a Gyarados, and that was no problem to take out. And same thing could be said about his Quagsire. Pretty easy to kill. Oh. And would you look at that? His Floatzel couldn't put up much of a fight either. This alongside the first gym was without a doubt the easiest part of this challenge. We were now halfway done through our gym battles. Next thing we have to do is eavesdrop on this Team Galactic Grunt who's like making evil plans just in the middle of nowhere, as you do. He runs away, we chase him down. He's like, stop following me. And right as he's getting away, Trash is like, hey, let's fight again. And because he interrupted me harassing the guy, I'm like, hey, your Pokemon's lives are now gone. Cry about it. We continue our hunt for the Galactic Grunt and chase him down everywhere he goes until he inevitably gives up and decides to battle me and which like the grunt before results in his cat dying we then meet up with Cynthia she gives us some medicine to give to some Psyducks to open up our next path to where we need to go and approached the Psyduck squad the Psyduck are standing firm they aren't inclined to move until I give them some secret medicine then Cynthia's like hey give this charm to my grandma and we're like all right let, let's go and give this charm to her grandma woo child labor just an update on Piplup's level, he was now level 45. Very impressive little penguin. We then find the old woman and she's like, hey, Team Galactic are about to blow up the city, which is pretty dark for a Pokemon game. That's like full on terrorism. So we're like, hey, what are you doing? And then we're like in a fight. We kill his pet frog, we go inside and then learn about the Lake Trio who will be used as slaves by Team Galactic later. But it was now time to face our next gym battle. We made our way to Hearthome City. This time around, it was a ghost type gym, which had one of the hardest questions I've ever been asked throughout my lifetime. <laughs> One math quiz later, and we met Fantina. The battle started out with her sending out her Drifbloom, which was no problem to take out. But after being burnt by the Drifbloom and Gengar confusing Piplup, things took a nosedive very quickly, resulting in another loss. I decided to try again, and the Willipo Wisp, which burnt the Piplup and Gengar using Confuseray, was just a crazy combo that made things very hard. I decided to do more underground training until we reached level 50, halfway to the max level that Piplup could be. Third time around, we managed to defeat the Gengar, and her final Pokemon was a Mist Magius, which knew 
razor leaf. Seeing that text box pop up gave me a heart attack. Luckily, I was able to one-shot the Miss Magius after that attack, meaning we had won the gym battle. We had then earned the glorious fidget spinner gym badge and only had three more to go. This time around, there wasn't any story stuff that was trying to stop us from going to the next gym, so we made our way there, considering we now had the ability to use Surf. And can I just say, the water and water physics in this game just look so good. Like, just look at that water. We then entered Canalav City, and before we can make our way to the next gym, Barry's like, yo, can you kill my Pokemon again, please? And I'm like, you damn right I can. That seems like Pokemon abuse, but I mean, he's asking for it. And in we went, into the Steel Gym. I was feeling pretty confident about this one. Obviously, water type moves were super effective against everything, and we had recently learned Hydro Pump, which is just a super strong water type move. So we did all the mini trainer battles, went across all the conveyor belts, and found ourselves confronting the next gym leader, Byron. Byron's first Pokemon was a Bronzel, and was easily taken out by two Hydro Pumps. His second Pokemon was Steelix, and I could have one-shot it if it didn't have Sturdy. And because earlier in the game, one of the gym leaders didn't have Sturdy on their Steelix, I just assumed he wouldn't either. So I didn't heal Piplop, and he died to an Earthquake from Steelix. This wasn't because I was underleveled or anything, so I decided to try again instantly, took out the Steelix this time around, and as Bastiodon was the same as Steelix. Would have been one-shotted if it didn't have Sturdy. And for the most part, that was just another easy gym down. We only had two more bad just to go. Trash is then like, hey, let's go to the library, because Team Galactic like blew up stuff, because they're terrorists. Yeah. And Rowan's like, hey, kids, like literally kids, go stop this gigantic evil organization by yourselves. And we're like, yeah, okay, yeah, that sounds about right. Again, showing the power of child labor in the Pokemon universe. We then go and investigate the blown up lake, take down a few Team Galactic members along the way, and can we get an F in the chat for all the poor Magikarp who lost their lives to this act of terrorism? Poor things just flopping around with no way of survival. Rest in peace, Magikarps. We then go into the cave where one of the lake Pokemon were, and face off against the last of the commanders. This time, Commander Saturn, with the epic blue hair. It also seemed as if he wanted us to win this battle, because his first move was Rain Dance. You know what that does? Make water type moves stronger. Yes, I know it's for the Toxic Croak to heal him, but it was funny either way. Once we defeat him, we had to go all the way back to our hometown, to make our way to Lake Viridi, to, you know, stop Team Galactic. After a bunch of grunts, we meet up with Mars again and she's like, fight me again. So we do. The battle was piss easy. They now had all of the Lake Trio held captive, that being the Spirit Azelf and Yuxi. But before we could raid their base, we had to take on the next gym and make sure that Trash was okay where he was. To get to where I needed to go, I still needed to learn strength. So basically I went into the Lavender Town Tower ripoff because, you know, two old ladies standing there giving a kid strength. Yep, I don't understand the Pokemon universe. Now that we had strength, we can go through Mount Cornet and come out on top of the snowy area. Eventually we made it to Snowpoint City and it was time to take on the seventh gym. This one obviously being ice themed. It took me ages for my tiny brain to be able to comprehend how to solve this puzzle but eventually in no time we made our way to what? Candice? More like Candice did. To be honest, I had no clue how this battle was gonna go. It was very annoying that her snow types allowed it to hail, which did extra damage to me every turn. And for some reason, her snow of a new razor leaf? Why does everyone I've got a super effective move against me? My Piplop got taken down very quickly. The second time around, I was able to take out the Snova due to a critical hit and learning that Drill Peck was very effective against him. The Sneasel could also be taken down with one Hydro Pump and the Metacham was easy to kill as well. However, this battle was far from complete because she was the first gym leader to have four Pokemon, and obviously they always save their best for last. And of course, her Obama Snow new Giga Drain. Super effective damage on me, and a lot of healing on him. Plus, being damaged by the hail every turn. It took a few attempts, but if I just kept using Hyper Potion, and Obama Snow never got a critical hit on me, I could actually wait until she ran out of the Giga Drain move. For those who don't know, each move has what's called a PP. Yeah, great name Pokemon. Which basically tells you how many times you can use a move before it runs out. So basically, I waited until she couldn't use Giga Drain anymore. She then moved on to using Earthquake which did barely any damage to me, allowing me to take out the Obama Snow. And now that we've beaten her gym and gained the seventh gym badge, we only had one more to go. It was time to check on Trash, who was with Commander Jupiter to try and stop her. It was too late, because he's trash. Get it? Because that's why I named him that. Because he's trash. Wow, you're so trash. Oh!
it was time to infiltrate the Team Galactic HQ. This Team Galactic dude accidentally left his key behind in a Pokeball, because apparently that's where you put your keys, which allowed us to easily break into their storage unit and then eventually into their HQ. We took out many of the grunts and went through all the cool little teleporters where Dawn ascends. And then it was time for our very first battle against the one and only boss of Team Galactic, Cyrus. I wasn't sure how strong he was going to be, but let's just say our first battle with him was very, very easy. His Murkrow got killed in one shot, same with his Golbat, and his Sneasel was killed with two Hydro Pumps. And because he was so impressed with us, he's like, here, have a Master Ball. After we asserted our dominance on him, he's like, fine, set the Pokemon free. We enter the epic looking lab, and we see Uxie, Mispirit, and Azelf trapped in their cages, with only one person stopping us from freeing them, Commander Saturn. Yeah, like that was going to be a problem. His battle was pretty much the exact same as before, which wasn't even that long ago, so easy win. And he's like, you know what? Fine, release them. We're now going to take over Dialga now. So it was time to scale Mount Coronet, which is a very long trek, and considering you're not allowed to just fly to the top of it even once you make it there, that got very annoying. And I had to buy a bunch of repels because running into Pokemon just got so obnoxious. And I actually ended up losing to one of the grunts because I just didn't have any healing on me. But eventually we made it to the top where we faced our first massive problem for the challenge. It was pretty much the exact same thing with our Sobble only video for Sword and Shield, where basically it was a forced 2v2, except I didn't have another person to help me. So I basically required two Pokemon, and it's not like I could skip this battle, it was required for the story. So I know I've avoided it this whole time, but I never said I couldn't catch any Pokemon. As long as I don't actually use them, the run is still valid in my eyes. So what I decided to do was go back home, into the very first route, and our first encounter was a Starly. So what better way to catch him than with the Master Ball we recently received? This is probably the worst worst Pokemon I've ever used a Master Ball on, but at least we knew we were gonna catch it no matter what. So you're probably thinking, how is this a Piplup only run if you're gonna use that Starly? Well basically during the double battle, when I'm told to pick a move for Starly to use, I'll just use like a random item like Ice Heal, which doesn't have any effect, basically wasting his move. And then you might be thinking, well he took one of the attacks, that was obviously meant to go towards Piplup. So once Starly was dead, I just used another item that did nothing, which basically gave them two free hits on me. So there you go, Starly was never used. I was actually at a super disadvantage and still won. Starly was then sent to the box where he will always sit and be forgotten for all eternity. It was then time to approach Cyrus, but it was too late. He had Dialga under his control. Dialga was like, rah, colors in the sky, because that's apparently how you create a new universe. I think this cutscene was pretty cool, but before we can take on Cyrus to stop him, Jupiter and Mars were like, hey, let's fight. And Trash is like, I got your back. So it was an epic double battle. I pretty much carried the battle, of course. And Cyrus was like, grrr, I'm even angrier now. And then, all of a sudden, Miss Spirit, Azelf, and Uxie were like, let's free Dialga. And we're like, whoa, this is crazy. And Miss Spirit's like, thank you, Tiny Dawn. And Cyrus is like, bruh. And just look at his evil little chibi walk. This game is amazing. And it was time for our second Cyrus battle. This time, it was a lot harder. His Haunch Crow was no problem, but because I got cocky, his Gyarados killed me. I guess he wasn't that much harder. I just wasn't playing properly. The real problem was having to climb up Mount Coronet again. It takes like 5-10 minutes. Too long. And for some reason that meant we had to refight Jupiter and Mars. The second time around we took out the Gyarados, same with the Weavile, and the battle itself wasn't that hard after all. Then the Team Galactic members were like, alright, this kid is too strong, I'ma head out. And then Rowan's like, Tiny Dawn, Dialga is meant for you. <laughs> yeah right, I'm gonna kill that bitch. We then initiate the battle against Dialga. And let me know if this has happened to you, but I didn't realise this until I'm editing, and after seeing other people encounter Dialga, but I seem to have gotten the background where you fight Pal where it has like the clouds going into this black hole. When you're fighting Dialga, it's meant to be like all orange in the sky. This could just be a version one glitch. I don't know. It was pretty weird. But anyway, it was time to kill him. We did not need anyone on our team but Piplup. Legendary or not, he was going down. It wasn't hard to keep Piplup alive as long as I kept using hyper potions. And eventually, by using a brine, this was probably the first time I've purposely killed a legendary without catching it. And with that story arc out the way, it was time to head to our final gym by going across this wall watery area, fighting a bunch of trainers, and eventually reaching Sunny Shore City. Whew, one more gym to go. Surely this one's not going to be too hard, right? Wait, what? It's- no, there's no way it's an 
It's an electric type gym. The final gym is electric type. You have got to be kidding me. For some reason, they had kids operating this area <laughs> and it wasn't just one, it was like three or four kids. Again, proving Pokemon universe is filled with child labor, but that's not the point. The point was, this was an electric type final gym. This was going to be a very hard challenge. But eventually we found Volkner and it was time for our first battle against each other. He had four Pokemon and I was very worried and how this was gonna go. His first Pokemon was Raichu, and would pretty much always like swap out to another Pokemon on his first move, and usually send out Ambipalm. Luckily, Drill Peck was very good against it. He would then send out Raichu again, only to be swapped to another Pokemon, usually Octillery, and on my first battle against him, Octillery used a Charge Beam on me and took out my Piplup. I knew I was way too underleveled, so it was time to grind out some more XP. The underground method wasn't working anywhere near as good as it was before, so it was time to find a new way to gain XP. In one of the caves, I found out that you could find a Lucky Egg, which which is an item I should have got ages ago because it gives you a lot more XP after battles. And basically I just searched up good XP grinds and one of the first and easiest things that came up was going to this beach, battling this fisherman who had two Pokemon, one of them being a Magikarp. We're not here for the Magikarp, he barely gave any XP, but for his Gyarados. Because upon killing him, he would give us almost 2000 XP, which was pretty good. And what makes this a grind spot is by using the Versus Seeker, it allows you to re-battle him again. So you take out his Gyarados, get a bunch of XP, and then you charge the Versus Seeker by doing a hundred steps, which you can keep track of with the Poketch and just spinning in circles on your bike. You then fight the trainer again, take out the Gyarados, get some XP, fly to the nearest Pokemon Center to heal up when you're out of PP or HP, and rinse and repeat. After what I think was around two and a half hours of doing this method, I got from level 66 to level 75. I thought surely this would be enough. So I took on Volkner again, and the Octillery killed me with Octazooka. The third time around, I was killed by Raichu, then again by Octillery then again by Octillery. But then the next attempt, I was able to take out his Luxray and all that was left was his Raichu. Raichu was saved for last because he would always send him in and then take him back and with one lucky Hydro Pump hitting him, it did enough damage to allow me to beat him. We had beaten the final and hardest gym and were now ready to take on the Elite Four and Champion. Volkner gave us the Meltan badge and it was time to set sail for Victory Road and the Pokemon League. This was it. We were nearly at the end of the run. Could we beat it? But yeah, Victory Road was like, you know, any other Pokemon Victory Road. Full of a bunch of trainer battles, full of a bunch of puzzles, and very maze-like. I can't remember how long it took to get through Victory Road, but after defeating Batman's Pokemon, we finally found the exit and had finally made it to the Pokemon League, only using Piplup. We were so close to the end of this challenge. I knew for a fact that there was no way we were getting through it all at only level 78. So it was time to do something I had been planning since the beginning of this run. Search up a guide on where to find all the rare candies in Sinnoh. Rare candy is an item that if fed to a Pokemon will instantly level it up no matter what. So I looked through the guide, went all around Sinnoh searching for all the rare candies I could. By the end of my little journey, I managed to get 13 rare candies that were easily accessible. My ultimate goal was to get Piplup to level 95 before entering the Pokemon League. So I did the trusty Fisherman Gyarados XP grind for what was probably another two, three hours or something like that until we made it to level 82, which meant if we fed him all the rare candies, he would be exactly where I wanted him to be. 300,000 XP was given to him through rare candies and our Piplup had reached level 95. I didn't just get him to 100 because I knew that during the Elite Four battles he would get enough XP to level up. We then fly back to the Pokemon League, enter the castle it's encased in, stock up on as many potions as possible, heal Piplup to be prepared for what's to come, and now it's time and to see if we are worthy of becoming... Oh, never mind. Trash wants me to crush his dreams one last time. Sure thing, can do. Nothing makes me happier. Say goodbye to your hopes and dreams, Trash and Trash's Pokemon. I will be the champion of this region, not you with your yee ass looking haircut. <clears throat> now it is time to enter the Pokemon League. I was actually pretty uneducated on what the Elite Four was actually like. I obviously knew Cynthia was the champion. The first Elite Four member was Aaron, who was a bug type Elite Four member. And he sent out a Dustox. Hey, I remember fighting bug types like Dustox against Team Galactic. What did I say earlier? Drill Peck would almost guarantee a one shot on them. So yeah, having Drill Peck really has been a blessing throughout this whole challenge. I took out his Dustox. He sent out a Heracross, which got one-shotted. He sent out a Beautify, which also got one-shotted. Then a Vesper Queen, which only took two hits to take out. And we were already up to his final Pokemon, Drapion. Now, Drapion's a Pokemon who gets critical hits almost every move, but with a few heals and people up using Brine, we actually took out one of the Elite Four members. Aaron was defeated. I didn't let my guard down, though. There was still a long way to go. The next 
X Elite Four member was Bertha, who was a ground type Pokemon user. The first Pokemon she sent out was Quagsire, and he was quite a problem. Hydro Pump and Brine were probably my strongest moves I had against just anyone, but Quagsire knew Water Absorb, meaning it did nothing to him. Drill Peck didn't do a lot of damage to him. He knew how to poison Piplup, and the Quagsire had leftovers, meaning he heals up every round. Piplup definitely couldn't take out Quagsire in this state, leading us to our first of many losses in the Pokemon League. But luckily, there was one thing, and I'm pretty sure the only thing that would save this run. In my bag, I had TM86. That would be Grass Knot. The only grass type move that I had that Piplup could actually learn. A move that does more damage the heavier the Pokemon. Quagsire is weak to grass, and he is a heavy Pokemon. I replaced Dig with Grass Knot. I took out Aaron, and it was time to test out my Grass Knot theory. Surely that would kill Quagsire. And well, it one-shotted him. Not only that, it one-shotted Pseudo Wudo. It two-shotted Wishcash. It two-shotted Golem. It was hard to find a move her Herpoundom wasn't weak against. We Hydro Pumped his ass, and that was two Elite Four members down. <sighs> halfway through the Elite Four. Things have been too easy. Watch the next member be like grass type or electric type. <gasps> yes! A fire type. Could he have been a more perfect typing for me? I don't think so. Flint, the fire type Elite Four member, stood no chance against my Piplup. That statement was true for his Rapidash, his Steelix, his Lapunny. His Driftblim was a little bit harder to kill. Not this battle. Just keep this Driftblim in mind. I actually want to brutally torture that Driftblim. You'll see why soon. And his Infernape should have got one-shotted if it didn't have Focus Sash. So I'm pretty sure the results are quite clear. Another Elite Four member down. One to go before we could face Cynthia. The final Elite Four member was Lucian, who was a ghost type user. Could I do it? Could I make my way to Cynthia? For some reason, his giraffe egg knew Thunderbolt, which was scary. But again, Thunderbolt isn't actually that strong against my Piplop. His giraffe egg was easy to kill. His Mr. Mime and Metacham were as well. But then it was his Alakazam. Alakazam knew a move known as Future Sight, which is a move that doesn't do damage at the time, but two moves later does the damage and is pretty strong. Basically, when I was at full health, he used a shockwave on me and then the Future Sight attack hit and it, it just killed my Piplup. It was at full health. Not gonna lie, I was kind of happy I didn't get to Cynthia yet because at the time I didn't even have a way to heal up his moves PP, meaning that if I got to Cynthia I would basically have no moves left. So my solution to this was by harvesting and planting leper berries. One leper berry will restore 10 PP on a Pokemon's move and eventually I managed to get myself 19 leper berries. It was time to get our revenge, but not before getting knocked out by Aaron Drapion. Next time around we took him out easily, same with all of Bertha's Pokemon and Flint, of course, was no problem. Back to the Alakazam. And, well, let's just say the exact same thing happened. The Future Sight just absolutely obliterated Piplup. And for some reason, I forgot you could save during the Elite Four, because for some reason, I was just thinking that if you save during the Elite Four, once you load that save, you'll just be sent back to the beginning. I, I don't know why I thought that. So I had to go through the other three members. And remember how I said I hated this Drifloom? Well, it knew a move known as Minimized, which brought up Drifloom's evasiveness, meaning it's way more likely to dodge my attacks. It somehow managed managed to use it so many times that it maxed out its evasiveness and it was like one in like probably 10 moves that would actually hit it. And it's not like it could have ended my suffering because it had no moves that dealt damage. It knew Willipo Whis, which burnt me, not like a burn was going to kill me though if I didn't heal myself. And it would just cycle between Minimize and Willipo Wisp over and over again. It was just this ultimate standoff of me trying to get a hit on it, it pretty much dodging it every time and even if it did hit, it would only do a tiny amount of damage, and then after what felt like around a hundred turns later, it was almost dead, then Flint's like, nah, let's use Restore. So pretty much, I just had to wait until Driftlin had literally no moves left, so it would be forced to use Struggle, which is a move that basically hurts itself. Pure pain. Anyway, we finally made it back to the Alakazam. It used Future Sight, but I was luckily able to kill the Alakazam in two hits. Lucian only had one more Pokemon left, and that was Bronzong. But then out of nowhere, the Future Sight attack hit me. I didn't know it was still active when Alakazam was dead, but I somehow managed to survive the hit. I don't know how, because last time it one-shotted me at full health, and then I was luckily able to take out the Bronzong. That was it. We had defeated the Elite Four. And how fitting, our Piplup reached level 100 right before facing the champion of the Sinnoh region. We declined Piplup's evolution for the final time, heal him up to get ready for the next battle, restore all his moves. This was it, the final battle of our run. If we could beat Cynthia, we would have beaten Pokemon Brilliant Diamond only using Pipla. So you know what we gotta do? Cue the iconic Cynthia battle theme. 
feels very nervous for this battle for obvious reasons. Cynthia is known to haunt the children who played Diamond and Pearl when they were a kid, just due to how difficult her battle was. Could I do it with only Pipla? Her first Pokemon was Spiritomb, which she pretty much instantly withdrew for Roserade. Drillpeg was pretty good at killing Roserade, obviously for being a grass type, and then out came Gastrodon, another ground type. You know what we recently learned to stop ground types? Grass Knot. That was able to take out Gastrodon in two hits. She brought back in her Spiritomb. We exchanged a few moves. She full restored her Spiritomb, but eventually we were able to take it out. <sighs> Half a Pokemon down. Her next one was Lucario. I was obviously constantly healing Piplup to try and not get killed, and honestly, Lucario wasn't that hard to kill either. Two more to go. Next was her Milotic, one of Cynthia's most iconic Pokemon for just being an absolute tank. However, I knew a very special move that did damage based on weight. Milotic seems like a pretty heavy Pokemon, and by using Grass Knot, we could half its health in one attack. And due to the friendship mechanic, Piplup kept dodging attacks, which was very good, and we were able to take out Milotic. One more Pokemon to go, and I think we all know who it is. Cynthia's iconic Garchomp. He used a sword dance to increase his attack. He dodged one of my hydro pumps, and then... He one-shots me with Earthquake. Oh, so close. This is definitely possible. And it must have gotten really lucky the first time around because the Roserade managed to kill me many more times. Essentially, if I didn't drill peck and kill it in one shot, it would kill me. That's pretty much how it went. But after a couple more losses and a very, very long standoff against her Milotic, we made it back up to a Garchomp. He used Earthquake without a Swords Dance, which was scary enough, but luckily Piplup managed to dodge it. This time around, we also managed to hit a Hydro Pump and it was at less than half health. Garchomp then decided to use another Earthquake, and we were so close to dying. I didn't even bother with healing. It was all or nothing. Use Brine, which does double damage because it's less than half health, and it hits. Defeating Cynthia's Garchomp. We actually did it. We beat all eight gyms, the Elite Four, and the champion of the Sinnoh region, Cynthia, only using a Piplop. This challenge was absolutely insane. I was just so happy we managed to do it. We took our victory walk, Cynthia and Rowan congratulate me, and it was time to put Piplup into the Hall of Fame. The level 100 Piplup and Tiny Dawn had now become the Sinnoh League champions. Don't forget to leave a like and subscribe. Thank you all so much for watching.